is when the course can exceed more than two semesters. Like now we are aware of the third years who are taking the research in different units. So there's a, a possibility that you will see a DG in your portal. Yeah. All right, maybe, uh, maybe uh, uh, just a follow-up question in line with the what uh, uh, Brian has asked. You're in Senate as members of Senate, of course, if you be elected, and you realize that we have students who will not graduate because they have an F grade. What does it take to change this F grade so that they can be able to graduate? This student has come to you asking you for assistance that I have an F grade, and of course you can still see in the Senate that they have been awarded an F grade. How easy is it to change this grade, and what is the procedure? Maybe let's begin from Ombui as we go to the back to... James. Thank you. The first thing is that uh, this student given an F grade, you start following from the lecturer and know the reason why this student was awarded an F. There are some legible le reasons whereby sometimes the lecturer can award a student without his or her mistake. Maybe the script got lost on the process of marking such like when you follow that one you have a mandate of following that grade right from the lecturer maybe the lecturer himself can take a mandate to grade the student or if it becomes hard you as the cs academic you will have a channel through the dvc academic office to the registrar for the student to be graded. Number two, sometimes the student can be, gra can be graded an F, maybe because of his fault. Maybe the student did not complete the assignments in class, or maybe the student missed an exam. So for, for me to help this student, is first of all pleading with the lecturer so that it can be easy solving it right from this lowest channel before it advances. Thank you. All right, Helen. Ambui um, mentions that first step is going to the lecturer, finding out what the, where the problem was. Would you agree with him and what would be the second step? Yeah, I agree with him that the first step is the lecturer. And I know that once you have gone to the lecturer, um, the lecturer will initiate a change of grade um, form, which, um, and the lecturer will only do that if, if you, he or she awarded you an F grade with uh, um, that you did not deserve. For example, if you're given an F grade because um, there was a mistake in, you know, we are humans and the lecturer can make a mistake and give instead, maybe I'm the one who's supposed to get an F, but they give it to Ombui and I get Ombui's grade. That can happen. So the, le the, the lecturer will initiate a change of grade form and afterwards I, I, it will be taken to the academic um, standard committee whereby they will have to review the, to review the, and check. This student has said that this and this happened. Did he really submit all the assignments? Did he attend class? Did he miss any of the exams? And if they realize that you have not done any of that, then the F grade may remain. And if they realize, no, there was a mistake, this student did everything right, then I believe they will do the right thing and change a grade for you and award you what you deserved. All right, thank you very much, James. You've listened to the both of them. Lecturer first. Of course, the leader, you as a leader, you go to them. If the lecturer admits that there was a mistake on his side, then this, he will initiate by himself the change of grade and it will be taken to Academic Senate Committee. Do you agree with the chain? And if there's any problem, would you please possibly mention it out and add if what if the lecturer does not accept that the mistake is on his side, what happens next? What is the next course of action? 
Yeah, thank you so much. I first of all disagree with my with my two colleagues. Uh, you can't first begin with the lecturer because we have the complainant. And who is the complainant? He is the student. Uh, when a student has come and the student says that uh, he has been awarded an F, uh, first of all, we needed to get the basis of the problem. And at the basis of the problem here, we begin with the student himself or herself. Who is this particular student? What are the details of the student? And from there, being the cabinet secretary for academics, who has been there? Uh, first of all, you need to begin and ask this, the student, uh, which, uh, is he sure that he registers, first of all, for the course? Are you sure? And uh, if you are sure, which semester was it when you registered for this particular course to show that indeed you registered? And are you sure you registered under this particular lecturer to be very sure with all the details? And from there, next you have to ask this particular student. And uh, being aware of the expectation of that particular course, courses here have different expectations. You needed to ask if the student did but everything that was expected, be it attending the class, be it doing the assignments, quizzes, mid semester up to the final examination. If the student says yes, and you have documented everything, because you have to work with evidence to show that whatever you are following up or you are doing is uh, valid, then um, after finding out everything that's needed, first of all, you have to send first the student, because he is the complainant. First of all, you need to ask him, what have you done so far? Because before a student comes to you, there is maybe something that he has done concerning the same. You find out that some students maybe uh, they inappropriately approach the lecturer. So you ask first, what have you done concerning the same? After realizing that whatever you did, that you scored or you got, that is an F grade. Now, when this particular student says, maybe has not I tried to approach the lecturer, you can first tell the student to do what? Um, to try check on the lecturer in a proper way. Like, uh, sir, madam, actually I'm not trying, I'm not understanding why I got an F. Why I got this particular grade after doing everything as per the expectation of the course. Now, you send that student to the lecturer first to find out why this and this happened. And if a student maybe tried to approach the lecturer and uh, things did not work out properly, especially things with the courses, the people who did with the courses are the HODs and it's documented the HODs deal with the courses. And uh, first of all, when this particular student says they approached the lecturer and maybe not respond appropriately, the student was not satisfied. I being, that's the CS for academics, I have maybe to take the student because, or maybe I have the details of the student, I go with the student to the particular lecturer. The, he, this is the way, this is particular student, and uh, the student says, register this course under your, your name, and uh, you facilitated the course, and at the end, the student got an F grade. But according to the student, actually, it's not satisfying because he met everything. And, uh, According to him, he, he, he believes he was to get a better grade. Is there maybe anything that uh, was quite inconveniencing that uh, maybe would have resulted to the same grade, to the student earning that grade? So from there, we can reason with the lecturer. He or she, first of all, have to go back to his uh, records. Uh, all right, let me just fast forward. You, now that you've reasoned with the lecturer, he or she has said no, and that is final. So wh what is the next course of action? Yeah, thank you. Uh, when the lecturer says no and the student is very satisfied first, the next person to go to is the HOD of that particular, of that particular, uh, uh, first of all, you have the HOD and you have to know first the HOD of the department offering the course and the HOD where the student comes from. I can be a student from nursing, but taking a course which is being offered from that is uh, from the education department. And now, first of all, the student has to do what to meet his or her HOD. That uh, this is the way, and uh, this is how it is. And uh, when I've gone to the, to the lecturer, this is what I've got. And this particular HOD 
under which the student falls, if he's a nursing student, will have to rely with that particular HOD who is there. And they will have to communicate to the lecturer. If things are not working out with the HOD, and the dean is informed, and still they are not solving it, that's where now our able professor, Paul Wahonius, the DVC Academics, comes in to find out why this and this is happening. And uh, if it's validated indeed that uh, there was an error, maybe through feeding in the marks or in one way or another, and the, and the lecturer has tried to find out now the reason why they need to get a better grade and it's to be changed now. We are now to changing. Now he is whereby, first of all, the lecturer goes through everything, and uh, if the grade has been changed, Wherever it's supposed to be submitted first is that uh, once everything is compiled, this lecturer first will congress with the HOD, and uh, the HOD is informed that uh, this is it, this is it, and uh, the, 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 the courses, the course grade which has been now rectified is submitted to where? To the registrar's desk. And at the registrar's desk, we have so many activities, academic activities, and uh, we are focusing on the change of grade is the lecturer to apply for the change of grade of that particular student, and he or she has applied for it. Once submitted at the registrar's desk, what happens is that uh, the registrar schedules this particular uh, uh, change of grade as per the academic standards, whereby depending on what was submitted, just the way we follow the emails, first come, first serve. What happens that the registrar will have to submit that particular, will have to document it under the agendas of the particular meeting when they are handling, let's say, the, the change of grades. It will be submitted to the, uh, to the academic standard committee meeting, whereby it will be approved depending on the reason as why it, to why it happened. And once validated, the grade will be changed, whereby it will be approved and uh, taken back to the... Uh, to the HOD and the lecturer, and it will be uh, rectified. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me get back to Helen uh, before we uh, take it back to Brian. Imagine the teacher, the lecturer, has said no, and now the student comes up with an, an allegation that this lecturer actually hates me, that this lecturer is unfair to me. Probably this one day, if it's a male lecturer, wanted to have some uh, maybe favors. You know what I mean? I don't want to say everything. And what course of action do you take from that point? Um, so the grade, the F grade, or whatever grade is there, was not awarded to him fairly. It was awarded to him and uh, to her unfairly because the teacher wanted favors from her. So what would be your course of action as a CS, academics, and foreign affairs? Okay, if the student says that the lecturer wanted some favors, and we all know what that means, um, first, I'd want to know, um, because uh, you can't just claim that someone, that a lecturer had wanted you to do this and this. You have to, because everything that you do is based on evidence. And uh, I, would, uh, I would first speak to this student and try to find out why would he or she come up with such an allegation. Because this is not something that should be toyed with because it is a very serious thing. And we know that in universities, these things happen. You can find a lecturer who will want you to do some favors for him or her so that he or she can award you a grade. And if you refuse, he, will, he or she will um, punish you by awarding you a wrong grade. So what I will do is first interrogate this student before taking any action or any step further to know I what, what this student is saying. Is it truly the truth or is it um, just because he or she is desperate and he or she needs to graduate and thinks to himself, yeah, I can say this and create a scandal. All right, probably Umbu, you want to pick from there? He's, she's talked about interrogating the student, getting to get to the depth of this matter. And yeah. uh, you found out probably that the student somehow, there's nothing to show that uh, the information is credible. 
what will be your next course of action? Yeah. Sometimes you can interrogate the student and you get that there's no credible evidence from the student side. Now, the next step that you take is trying much and find whether is it true that whatever the student is claiming has happened from the maybe the lecturer and the student. After that, when you get that it is not true, then when you lie as with the student, get the information about the student, maybe whether this student l l is... Uh, allow me to interject a bit. Uh, yeah. You've said that you'll go to the lecturer to find out whether this truly happened. How would you no, approach the I've lecturer? Not, I've, I've not said that I'm going to the lecturer. You are going to interrogate the lecturer? Interrogate the student. The oh, the student? Yeah. Okay, okay, carry on. Yeah. First of all, when I, I must interrogate the student very well. Uh, I, I, no, want, I wanted to pick no, where she left. Yeah. Unless if you're objecting her point so yeah. that uh, you can start afresh. Oh, it is good to interrogate the student okay. and get the credible evidence. And now, after interrogating and finding that there is no credible evidence from this student, now there is a point that my brother Simu said. You must know more about this student. Is he, is he or she attending classes? Is this student regularly doing the assignments of the teacher? Maybe sometimes the student might be lazy and look for a way of looking for an excuse that maybe the lecturer wants some favors. You see? Such like things. And then when you find that really this student is genuine and you have a credible evidence that this student attends classes, then you'll start now following the 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 grade from the lecturer from the lecturer not going uh, to the lecturer as look allow me to interject once again yeah my question was that if you as a cs for academics and foreign affairs find out that the information given to you by the student is not credible what would be your next course of action my next course of action as say said is to find more about the student and on how sh he or she conducts in his or her class attendance uh, academics and all such because there might be another excuse for this student scoring an F apart from the, f the, 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 the claim that she or she gives yeah that is the next step that I'll take all right. yeah all right thank you very much let's take it back to Brian to get a, another uh, question uh, thank you so much. I think uh, they've uh, talked about uh, the change of grade and maybe a student out there is asking, suppose a lecturer leaves Barton University and a student comes to you and claims that uh, I did a course with this particular lecturer and I have a missing grade. What, what action are you going to take? Maybe I'll begin with Helen. Okay, what action am I going to take if someone has been awarded an F grade and the lecturer is no longer um, in Baraton. First, um, I would, since the lecturer is no longer in Baraton, and I, um, we always have four numbers of lecturers, but the best thing that I will do is go to the HOD for that specific department and tell him and explain to him that this student was awarded an F grade but the teacher is no longer in Baraton and so I would inquire for from the HOD what should we do next because I if I never knew the teacher also I don't have any contact that I can reach him but through the HOD who knew the teacher and who have contacts and the school has records of his email and also his contact they can contact him and try to know what happened uh, this student did he really um, attend all the classes what happened yeah maybe I can have input from my Yes, proceed. Yeah, as my sister said here, the first thing 
I, I think the first thing you should do is interrogating the student whether he or she did all that was needed for that to satisfy this, the, the course. Number two, when you get a credible evidence, now because the lecturer is not there, go to the HOD. The HOD is the one who has the details for all the lecturers, the contacts, the phone numbers. Then leave for the HOD to take part in finding ways to look for the lecturer because the student is not grad graded. Then when it finds it when you find it hard from the HOD, that is now when you will move it a bit higher to the school dean. From the school dean, it will be solved to the DVC academics. Thank you so much. And this question uh, goes to James. Uh, you've been the CS for academics and foreign affairs. Uh, students are really complaining, some of them, uh, that um, the change of grade process is too long. I mean, others are saying that they applied for the same uh, last semester and until now they haven't had their grades. What have you done to make sure that these students get their grades in time? Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Concerning that, actually, it's true change of grade usually take uh, some time. And uh, now, concerning that one, being a member of the Academic Standard Committee meeting, which specifically deals with the change of grades, either special examinations or the supplementary, I raise this uh, 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 request in the Academic Standard Committee meeting, which is chaired by the DVC Academics and the Secretary is the Registrar. And I raised by requesting that uh, we are having actually students being given the deadlines for the submission of the grades and uh, being given the penalties. And I asked first, is there the due time for the submission of the special exams and the supplementaries? And the question, the response was no. There is no any deadline for the submission of what? Of the supplementary and the special examinations. And my, and my question was, now, why are we giving the students the deadlines and not the lecturers? And at the end of the day, you realize, or at the end of the semester, that uh, a student is being penalized in one way or another, that uh, maybe the change of grade took a longer time in one way or another. And at the end of the day, when we, are having, we were in that meeting, I requested all the lecturers to be also given the deadlines. And uh, it was seconded by most of the HODs who were there because they realized lecturers are not having the deadlines for submission of the special examination supplementaries. And uh, right now onwards, lecturers are working with the deadlines to submit their grades for the change of grades and uh, the supplementaries and the special examinations and also marking is now being given a deadlines not only on the side of our students when they are playing their part but also the lecturers and uh, concerning also just the change of grades i have worked on several grades and uh, they have been changed in person because i've been there in various departments beginning with the school of nursing and a school of uh, that is a health sciences. I have been there under the complaints from students who came that their grades have not been changed. I had to find out as to why, when did they apply, and how long did it take. And I followed up in person, despite the fact that our responsibilities are limited to working with the HODs and the deans. I had to narrow down to lecturers in person, despite it, that it's not within our constitution that we work with the lecturers. I had to narrow down to particular lecture to find out why. And uh, most of those grades were actually done what were changed and uh, some students got the grades. Maybe just uh, some few at my desk which have not been approved yet and I'm still following up. And uh, when I get in touch with the lecturer, he's saying it's only going. It's like uh, they are having much work, but I'm um, following up. And in fact, tomorrow I'm meeting that is a uh, Mr. Felix Tepsirol over the inside. 
108 from, uh, that's a school of health science. There are some students who are supposed to graduate, but uh, he has not yet approved the grades. And I will be there tomorrow morning to ensure, find out why. That is it, sir. So may maybe just a follow-up. Uh, um, those who haven't received their grades, they applied for it last year. When are they going to get their grades? Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, for them to get the grade, you know, there are some who have gotten. And if there is a student who applied, you know, I work with, uh, with uh, what I've got from the students. Maybe through the respective senator or maybe the student in person has come. And uh, first of all, if there is any student who brought first, the request, and I'm working on it, is going to be facilitated and I've always given the responses to them at that particular time. And uh, unless the student is working in a person to that particular lecturer and has not brought the issue at hand to me, but if there are any pending grades and this is supposed to graduate, I'm following up and I'm going to follow up to ensure, in fact, if I've always said, if there is anyone with issues with pending grades, to come up because I don't know what a particular student is suffering, what's undergoing, so that I know how to follow up. But uh, that one with uh, those who brought their issues, I'm working on them and tomorrow I begin them their feedback. And uh, because I already handled it up to a particular po a point, and the lecturer told me he submitted or he was submitting, I want to find out how far has he gone with the submission of the grades. And uh, when we met last, he said that he was submitting the grades. Has he submitted or not yet? And if we say he submitted, I work closely with the registrar because she's a major advisor as far as uh, the courses, changing grades are concerned. I want to find out there is this particular lecturer, maybe so and so is saying he submitted the grades. How far they, did he submit or not? We need to find out based on the evidence at hand. And I'm very sure their grades are going to be out. And I've always told the, told the students, play your part. Because lecturers are part of the administrators. And when time comes, the lecturer will not be penalized. But when you have not played your part, you will be penalized, maybe not apply for change of grade at a particular time. So play your part. And when things are not working out, come up and say it's not working out. We, it's easier for us to fall up when you have played your part and at the end, you will get a positive response. That is it, sir. Uh, maybe uh, the last one before I get it back to um, Mr. Enoch. Must you push these uh, lecturers and uh, the people responsible to uh, give students their grades? Like, I mean, don't you think we must have um, mechanisms whereby the people involved in this entire process uh, are responsible because do uh, will you keep on going there, pushing them every day, every day, uh, you know, and students are so many. Don't you think we must have mechanism, or, or will you keep on going and pushing these lecturers, as you say, to make sure that the, uh, the grades for students are uh, put there in, in, in time? Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Actually, there needed to be mechanisms, and one of the mechanisms with the which I derived is the implementation of the deadlines for the lecturers to submit at a particular time. When it's not done, actually, another action has to be taken by the academic standard committee meeting. Why has he not submitted? And uh, now, concerning that, I'm looking into actually coming up with the proper mechanisms with you are going to tighten the belt, also on the side of lecturers, to ensure that uh, actually these grades are submitted on time, and they have been approved. And uh, the good thing is that uh, one thing I like with the Professor Paul Wahonya, the DBC academics, he's a man whom I've given him sleepless nights concerning the issues of students, and he's always up to the task to respond. And we are always working hand in hand to ensure that uh, the appropriate needs of the students are actually satisfied and met. And uh, concerning that, I would like to say, uh, if there are grades that are still pending, there are grades which were for the years of 2019, like uh, 2019, 2020, during Corona time, and uh, very few, maybe just one or two for the years in between here. But uh, since I entered the office, I would like to say, so many grades have been approved, and uh, students have gotten the grades. 
and uh, if there are any others which are still pending with the new rule that was derived for the deadlines, lecturers are on toes as per the pressure from above. We are following up which grades have not been submitted and how are we going to just, work on If that? I just interject you, uh, uh, you'll answer this in 20 seconds. Uh, those who uh, did their courses in 2019, what is going to happen to their grades? Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, concerning that, if maybe just one thing I would like to ask, uh, if they did, had they gotten the grades or not? They because have. they have the grades, or they haven't. They have an F maybe. They have an F maybe. Okay, that's a good question. And uh, because, you know, I need to find out if they have an F, did they apply what's expected? You know, once you get an F, you are supposed to repeat the course. And uh, was it followed up in a time, like, uh, did they find out why they got an F or not? It's something that they're bringing up for the first time. Because the special examination uh, policy changed, and right now we are having the 80%, and it's on the process which is ongoing. So maybe if I can ask, or first of all, uh, replying to that, is that uh, if a student has got an F in 2019 and 2020, let's say 0.1 or 0 0.2, um, and followed up up to a particular point, and uh, there was a positive response in one way or another. Because at that particular time, I had not entered the office, right? But now, since I'm there, and I've been in there, those who were having pending grades and were submitted, or were in the process of being submitted by the lecturer, their grades will be out. And uh, let me say, I follow up tomorrow to find out how far is the submission because we are operating with the time. And the time is very important. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much because we've taken a lot of time in that. Let me just uh, give a quick one uh, to the two because you've been there in the office and they are trying to challenge you in this. So allow me to just give them a simple question just to tone down the temperatures, probably give her the microphone. I need, I need to know whether they are familiar with the people they are going to work with. Probably who is the chancellor of this university? Um, Professor Philip Mayo. All right, Ombui, do you agree with her that the chancellor for this university is Professor Philip Mayo? No. The chancellor of this university is Dr. Precious Luguri. Right, and uh, Helen, who is the vice chancellor of this university? Oh, sorry for that. The vice chancellor is Professor Philip Mayo. All right, that's yeah. just a quick one. <laughs> Probably uh, you must have not, before you applied to become the CS for academics and uh, foreign affairs, you must have noticed either something that you would have done better than the current CS. Would you possibly point out some uh, mistakes or other failures of this CS who you're trying to challenge at this point? Okay, um, first concerning the questions that you have been asking him um, about the change of grad and all that. And it's, you know, it's, it takes a lot of time and energy to follow up, going to each lecturer and going to the registrar, going to the DVC and following up all that. So um, if I were to be chosen, I would lie, I would make sure that this thing, um, if it is possible, the change of grad should be done like on an online system. Because um, once the system has been set, we save a lot of time and we save a lot of energy. Um, because the lecturer will just have to key in some uh, all the things that are required and it will be forwarded to um, the DVC who will also do the same, the HOD who will do his part and up to the end whereby the student will receive a grade and I think this would save uh, much on time because a lot of, uh, and it's also easy to lose paperwork because paperwork is like, um, let's say if we have 100 students who are coming for change of grade you know, the paperwork is tiresome and difficult, so I would initiate an online system that would work for the change of grade. All right, so according to you, you would fault the CS for, uh, the current CS for Academics and Foreign Affairs for dealing with, anal uh, dealing the analog way. Yes. 
and so you'd uh, uh, advance and go digital. Yes. Right, uh, Ombui, do you f uh, find any failures or faults with the current CS and you'd like to challenge him? Yeah, there are a lot of failures. The first thing is the small things that make the life of a student very tough. Number one, since the semester started, our lecture rooms have no enough furniture. Something which is simple that should. In fact, for the past one month, most of the students have been Skyping classes because they reach in class, there are no enough chairs passing through the buildings, no chairs. The chairs have no armrests. So that is something very simple that should be done, but it is like a failure. Number two. How would you deal with this issue of furniture? And, uh, you know, we don't have enough yeah. furniture and maybe armrests. How would you deal with it as Th if elected? Thank you. If elected, because it is my mandate to find views from students and integrate them to the, to the administration. It is just something simple for me to request for enough chairs, maybe find the data of students who can be accommodated in the School of Humanity, School of Sciences, make sure that we have enough chairs and furniture that should accommodate students, not students moving f with their chair from one class to another. Number two, we are moving to a digital world whereby things should be done online. There's no way a senior student who is graduating could be moving from one office to the other. In fact, moving to BIS down there for him to be cleared. For me, I've been moved to create an online registration portal whereby a senior student... Please, please, please come up again. What did you just say? Come up again. I've, I've said this. We are moving to, to the... You, you aiming, uh, you would like to yeah. create an online what? Online graduation portal. Where Please come up again for the third time. What did you just say? Online graduation portal. Okay. Whereby the senior student will just submit his credentials like the certificate and what have you. Then from there he will be, op he or she will open his, uh, he will create his portal online, all the departments are there, just sending a request to the relevant department, approves the student, the senior student. And then if there is an issue that should be cleared, that is where the student will go and follow. This one will just make the life of this, the, the graduating students easier. Number two, there is some, in the, in the registration, there is no way that a student could be moving from one office to the other for maybe these welfare approvals, such things, we could be having them integrated online that once the student pays 100 fee for the welfare, the student will just be auto-approved. It will save a, 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 the student's time that she could be, he or she could be sitting and plan for the semester for easier academics moving. There, there is a lot but for the starting, that is what I can say because of time. All right. So your issue would be moving the clearance of uh, the graduation application and clearance to be online. Also, yeah. the registration process, the approval for this, you said welfare fund? Welfare to fund be done online. All right. Yeah, and the approvals. So how does the welfare fund get involved with academics? Okay. How does it involve the academics you see the student has reached the, at the starting of the semester the student will be moving from one office to the other and yet the lecturer is in class waiting for this student to attend you see this thing good, good this response that's yeah. enough good response so yeah. you're saving on time thank saving you very much time. let me get back to helen and uh, get to hear if she has any other thing probably you'd like to fault the current CS or there's something he didn't know he did not do and you feel like you would do it and do it better um, also just to add on the issue of furniture also I also 
um, realize that we don't have enough tables in our classes. So like you find these lecturer, lecturers require a table and the tables, they are not adequate and enough. And also um, on the issue of books, uh, there's a problem with books. Yes, our library has tried so much to make sure that we have books. Um, but uh, as I was doing my research, I realized that there are some books that are, you can only find one book in the library concerning that subject matter. And all the CS academics that have been there, including uh, the former CS, they haven't done anything concerning that. And you find that these books, they might be two. And we have 100 students who are supposed to borrow. So when I, when I go to the library and borrow that book, I realize that it's not there. And this one person who has borrowed it will not, uh, when, uh, when 14 days expire, the same person will come and renew the book for himself. So it's only one student who will benefit from this book and others um, will have to look for materials elsewhere. So if, the, um, if I am elected to be the CS academics, I would move that um, if they add addition of books, not necessarily, they don't need to add like 100 books, 2000 books at the same time. They can start with during, they can start by saying that during um, this first semester, we will add an increase of 50 books. The next semester, 50, the next, and that way we will be able to sort the problem with. All right, thank you very much. Uh, current CS, uh, I don't know whether I should call you outgoing or current or whichever would apply. They faulted you that uh, probably you did not look into going digital, you've been analog. They've also faulted you for not uh, solving the issue of saving time during registration. Students go up and down just to get signatures, to get approval for paying. They've also faulted you for not following up to ensure that we have enough seats in uh, furniture and class. And uh, probably the last one has been the books in the library. Probably I would, I would, I would not go that I would like you to take a different uh, direction before you can respond to that. Please give us your achievements, the things you did and you feel like you really achieved then you, can, you have a right uh, of reply to the, uh, to the concerns they've raised. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, nice question. Since I entered the office as the Cabinet Secretary for Academics 2022-2023, uh, uh, the first thing that uh, I have made is that um, I have advocated for the adherence to the checklist, being very aware to the expectation of the academic bulletin and having known how students are suffering by were suffering by being told to drop one or two courses some of them actually are about to graduate or about to graduate and are being told to drop the courses i stood firmly and uh, i'm a person who work with evidence and i can mention there is a one course by known as a marketing and a production in the department of, uh, I think, a student from accounting and finance, whereby these students are going to graduate this year. And we had a lecturer known as Pastor or Mr. Abunda, whereby last semester he just told students that I'm not going to teach and I'm not going to offer the course and he had closed registration. He told them to drop the course. I followed up in person one-on-one -on -one with the evidence from the students and I ensured he offered the course. So I ensured there is proper adherence to the checklist, not only in that particular uh, uh, school, but uh, in the School of Nursing, I have ensured there is proper adherence to the checklist, whereby whether GR course or a major courses, when students have been being taught to drop a course, I understand is that uh, when you are being taught to drop a course, at the end, you'll have an extra semester, maybe one or two. So I have ensured this proper adherence to that. Then another thing is that um, uh, in the field of academics, I'm very aware that they are students who are doing pure mathematics and statistics from the School of Science and Technology. These students are always not having attachments. 
And after finding out each and everything, I raised the same concern in the Academic Science Committee meeting. So there was a committee that was appointed, the Attachment Review a Committee, and I am one of that members of that committee, and I have attended so many meetings on the same. And in that, we have tried as much as we can. In fact, there was no Attachment Review policies. So we have come up with the Attachment Review policies, and uh, not only those taking pure mathematics and statistics, but any student in this particular university, as long as you are a student, soon each and everyone is going to have the attachment for the proper uh, learning as far as the uh, acquiring of the skills is concerned. Then another thing that uh, I have done as far as uh, uh, academics is concerned is that um, in this academics, I have uh, liased with that is uh, each and every HOD. I have liased with each and every dean. And I have worked hand in hand with each and every student leader by providing proper coordination to ensure that any arising issue, in fact, some of the issues that you have raised here, like uh, student to lecturer uh, 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 interaction, the relationship, I have worked on it to ensure it's stabilized without creating confrontation, chaos, and confusions. Then there is another thing that I have done as far as academics is concerned. When you come to the school of nursing, um, there are students who are told, actually, who are supposed uh, to change the major. In nursing, actually, when you fail a course, uh, three times, or you take, you retake three times. You will have to do what you will have to change your major. And this was a group of around 30 students. I worked hand in hand with the senator and the department. And these students had been told to drop or change their majors. And we had a consensus and unanimously requested for them to be given warning letters instead of them being told what? To change their majors. And uh, in coordination with the DVC academics, it was approved and these students right now are ongoing very well. They have not changed their majors. Right now, if I could have just sat down and assumed everything, right now they could have been doing other majors as far as that is concerned. Then cons another thing that I've done is that as I told you earlier, I have actually followed up with the pending grades in different departments. I have followed up with that, and actually, I know how uh, the number of students that have gotten their pending grades, and how many are still, and it's on the process. And I'm very sure soon their grades will be out for those who are still, uh, still for, who are still waiting for their grades. Another thing that I've done is that, um, for example, in the School of, of uh, Education, Humanities and Social Sciences, we have had so many issues, especially when we come to graduation application. We have had issues with the application of the graduation, whereby some students were being told they are not eligible to do what? To apply for graduation. And also some were being not given that what? The approvals to go and look for the, 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 the areas for the attachment. And uh, despite that, these students, I don't know it was uh, somehow uh, the fear or the direct from the HOD, but I personally came down from uh, the, my office, I can say my office, and I narrowed down, I had the meeting, several meetings with these students. I made the HOD in coordination with the members, the QT club members, and the respective senator. We made the HOD, and from there, these students were approved and they were given letters to look for the areas or schools for the attachment and they are going to graduate. We have had uh, the recent issue whereby these students, uh, though it was 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 for the graduation, an issue which I've had students actually talking about very much. I was personally in the academic stands committee meeting, the only student representative there. And uh, when this issue was raised, in fact, there were two options that um, the deadline has passed. You know, it was supposed to be September 89. And from there, anybody who was supposed to 
apply later was supposed to pay around 1,000. And when it was about December that 8, it was supposed to be uh, no more applications. And it was this year, this semester, when we had to follow up. Because after finding out, I encountered there are some students who are doing what? Who are still eligible. Maybe they had one or two issues, but now they are very eligible to apply for graduation. I followed up the registrar, not once, several times, the DVC academics. Every time we went to the academic stand committee meeting, when we had pre registration meeting, even uh, this uh, Dr. Moka again asked the same question that I had asked. What if this student is eligible? The city mean is not going to apply for graduation. We followed up, despite the fact that they were to actually, as per the, the policy, to, to apply next year. We followed them, they were like, oh, uh, uh, let, some let, let me allow you one more minute to summarize and uh, maybe put in point form so that we give uh, a fair share of time to the rest. Uh, it's okay, sir. Now, I followed up with the issues of graduation and uh, they were sorted out, despite it being with uh, a certain penalty, which was supposed to be higher but negotiated for a lower amount, and it came to around 4,000. Now, those who are eligible actually had, uh, uh, we can say, had an opportunity to apply for the same and are going uh, to graduate. And another issue, uh, that uh, another thing that I have worked in academics is that um, I have tried as much as I can to sort each and every issue that has come to my desk. No issue has come and has been left untouched or unhandled unless it did not reach me. And I have ensured there is proper information to the student, the students are well informed as far as academics is concerned. I represent the academic standards. So in case there is anything very appropriate and uh, which is needed, in fact, I communicate most often with the DBC academics to ensure students are well informed every time and every each and each and every moment. Another thing that I have done is that um, I have always kept the senators on task for the time I have been there. Find out what's happening in your region. Are students very okay? So that we solve appropriately. Concerning registration, I have actually worked hand in hand with the CS for Finance and the DVC Academics and the president, whom I say is my boss, because, you know, as per the country, he's my boss. So we have worked hand in hand in during times of registration. We are very aware that actually the students actually take some time here and there because you know finances are always a problem in coordination this is for finance we have always ensured there are enough personnel at least all right i think it's fair enough uh, uh it, it's so much i can see i can clearly see you have a lot to still say but i believe uh the electorates know very well i'm gonna give a chance to both helen and Ombui to either object mm -hmm. whatever you've said and if you have anything that he said and you think or you feel that uh, he's lying, you can also you have a chance to say, I mean, to bring it out. Then also, in addition, you can add, speak to that camera, that's a voter. I know it's beyond your time to campaign, but you can as, uh, still assure that voter with what you can do in this docket. Okay, um, the former CS has said that has outlined the things that he has done and has said that he has worked closely with senators to find out what are the issues that are happening to students, the problems that students are having um, on the ground. But I would like to kindly object him because um, if he was working with these senators, then um, what I and Fred have mentioned, some of the issues that are, because we cannot learn we cannot learn. We need a good environment for learning. And the good environment starts with seating. So if I am to go to graduation square for a class, but I have to carry a seat from the auditorium up to there, and this has been happening, then I think there's a problem with the Senate that has been there and also with the former CS in a kind manner, not in a bad manner and also um the issue of graduation yes i am a third year and i would say I, I i don't know a lot about graduation but I, um this issue of having students like pay four thousand 
first beginning from 1000 3000 and all that we have students who are coming from um, backgrounds that are not we don't have rich parents who just have money and i might um if i if i don't have the money to apply for graduation will i have the money to to pay for let registration uh let applying for let graduation so i think uh the um, this issue of uh, money in applying for the let graduation and it increasing as the month goes it is hurtful to the students and this is the truth and that it should not be so and since it has happened if i am to be elected i won't um i would work with um, our HODs and DVC and the school deans to make sure that it is not this way. And also um, concerning graduation, I have realized too we have a problem with um, our graduation gowns, which are very, should I say, very old. Um, and this is a day that is very important too in a life of someone. Because as a student, I have worked four years hard and I have achieved my academic excellence. And I want to celebrate all these uh, four years that I've spent in my undergraduate. So um, if I am elected, I will also do something on that. And there are very many things that I have noted because as an aspirant for CS academics, I have been working from department and I have realized there are a lot of problems that we have. And these problems, you will get to um, hear about them in my manifesto. During that day on the 28th, when we will be giving our manifestos, you will get to realize and know what I will do for the students apart from what has already been mentioned here. Kindly please support me, stand with me, and let us work together for the benefit of our academic excellence. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And I also uh, give Ombuya a chance to once react, uh, first react to uh, uh, James's comments or whatever he said, then also take a chance to talk to that electorate and, uh, and uh, of course, ensure that uh, you get his or her support. Thank you very much. Our brother Smil, you've worked very well, but also I want to object to some of the points you've said. You've said well your work, you've worked on the pending grades. It is good. But since you entered in office, still the cries are more and more. Up to now you are saying there are some grades that you are working on. Is it that it's yesterday that you entered in office that you are still working on the grades. Why should we find that there is a grade that is not graded almost one year ago and you've said that you've been working on it since you entered in office. Number two, we have this issue that you are saying that there's no, this, this issue that the, the, uh, of courses, choosing of courses, you see, in education department, it is an obvious thing that you look, you, you, you go into the portal, you find there is no course that you, the, the, the course that you are supposed to do is not offered. It is an obvious thing. Even, I can say even this semester, as we are now, students of geography, most of them, dropped the courses to do them in the other semester later. So, when you say that you've completely worked on it, I don't see it. So when you say that you are, you've, you've thoroughly coordinated with the, with, the, with the senators to make sure that the life of students in this school academically is moving on, and still we see us complaining on small things, small things like furniture. Students are struggling with the Wi-Fi in the auditorium that just a small thing of increasing the strength and installing some routers down here to extend the Wi-Fi being, at, being something that students struggle out. How have you coordinated that? I'm totally objecting that. The only thing I want to assure you comrades, I Fred Ombui, I'm competent and I'm ready to serve 
humanity. My manifesto is going to be presented on 28th. My manifesto is based on all the issues that you encounter that are very much achievable to make a comrade's life academically move. Comrades, support me. What I've said now, I'll liars with the specific personnel and make sure that is achievable. I'm a boy who always speak what I can do and God has always used me before. God has always given me the strength of serving humanity and it is now that in Baraton I want to serve humanity. Thank you comrades for trusting me. Thank you because you are going to join me, Hans, to make the academic status of UOE go higher and higher. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, uh, just to be fair enough, I'll also give a chance to James not to respond because uh, I believe the electorates have listened to you and they've been engaging with you and, of course, they know you. So whatever you've done so far, I'm sure they can actually judge you. I'll give you some seconds also to talk to the electorate and uh, probably also seek once again for their support. Yeah, thank you so much. As you know, my name is Miu, uh, James Wanyonyi. I would like to take this opportunity to say that uh, I'm a man and I'm a gentleman who works based on reality. And I'm a gentleman who speaks based on evidence as far as how life has taught me or how professionalism is concerned. Whatever I say is always based on evidence. Whatever I've done is based on evidence. And it is down in records. And uh, for future reference, it will always be there. I would like to say at this point that uh, dear delegates, Dear members, when I was given the opportunity, I did my best to ensure that within the time that I was given, I ensured that each and every challenge academically brought at my desk in coordination with all the senators, working hand in hand with the HODs, deans, DVC academy, the registrar, generally the academic office, in addition the librarian, I ensure that all the issues brought are actually solved and in time. However, there are some issues, challenges that take some time. For example, the change of grade here and there, especially the special examinations, supplementaries, that uh, especially were done sometimes before I entered the office. But uh, very few are, uh, are on the process of being solved. I would like to say, I'm a very competent person who has worked by giving the administration sleepless nights, by giving the DVC academic sleepless nights in ensuring the issues of students are well solved. Whatever has been mentioned, I would like to say some of them are actually have already been pushed to be approved and to be implemented. And we or I am on the process of ensuring some of them are implemented within the shortest time possible, given the chance. And I would like to say that um, you gave me the chance, you have tested me, you have tried me, you have known how competent I am as far as how the government is. When you narrow down to a specific student leader who is the cabinet secretary for academics, whom am I here right now, I would like to say uh, radically, I have done my part. And when you give me the chance once again, we are going to work hand in hand with the transparency and inclusivity. And uh, I would like to encourage you that um, be very close and uh, continue being in touch so that when you give me another chance, I serve you and I ensure all your challenges are served to the maximum expectations. Because I cannot know what you are undergoing when you have not brought it on board for being solved. All those who brought their challenges have tasted the kind of man that I am. 
a man who does not relent when the student's needs are actually in question. A man who does not relent when what students deserve, what their rights, what they deserve is not in place. I hereby call upon you that I'm very ready to serve you with more experience than before. As the theme of my campaign was continued effective service and transformation to students. Choose me, vote me in, and I would like to say you will reap the solutions to the challenges that you will be having. So in me your trust, so in me your confidence, and we are going to work hand in hand to ensure that there is appropriate deliverance and satisfaction as far as your needs and expectations, expectations are. Thank you so much. I believe in you. I trust in God and I know we are going to work hand in hand given the opportunity to ensure we make University of Eastern Africa, Baraton, a better place to be. Thank you so much and may God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to give uh, a chance to my co-host to say a word and sign out before I can end the session it has been a very nice experience to have these guys here uh the leaders and uh you know the delegates are the ones now to decide on who will gonna be the next cs for um academics and uh, foreign affairs and so uh keep tuned in thank you so much for tuning in my name is brian osieku and tomorrow we shall be having it right here again with uh, the cs4 um uh, Secretary, Secretary General, sorry, and then the CS for Finance, Planning and Student Labor and uh, the Presidency. So it will gonna be so um, hot. So stay tuned. This is Baraton TV. Good night. It can get hotter than it is right now because we have uh, in or out. I don't know whether to say outgoing. I don't know whether it's going to, he's going to be asked or he's still going to stick to his job. There's a lady also in this contest. Very bold she says she's also ready to take this there's also a newcomer she's a newcomer there's another newcomer who is ombui who is also ready to fight the current cs the ball is left on your court it is either you choose one out of the three or you choose none it's impossible to choose none there is one that's gonna win tomorrow we're gonna be here same different time of course it's gonna be from 2 p.m all the way to finish remember this is exclusive Sabo panel. My name is Rasa Noxinde, and I'll keep reminding you that leaders are not chosen. Leaders are made. We don't make leaders here. We give you an opportunity to see who is your leader. This is a very critical uh, position which requires a lot of attention. Take your time. Go back to this recording. Go back and watch over again. Get your leader. It's been good. It's been great. Good night. Till tomorrow, my name is Arasa Noxinde. We'll see you once again. All the best.